find out the best way to get help with town issues. The search for a school superintendent moves forward and find out what meetings will be held tonight. These stories on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Monday, August 10th, 2015. I'm Sarah Mannell. Where is the best place to turn for help with town issues? Assistant Town Manager Mark L. says town staff are ready to help and can be reached in a variety of ways, from picking up the phone to reporting incidents in online. In the big picture of things, it helps that the town manager's office knows the types of communications that are coming in. I don't mean, you know, for every pothole or sign or dog barking, but in general, if it's a big issue, don't, don't be afraid to reach out to us. And there's so many ways now that we can do that. Um, some of the more complicated or, or sophisticated ways, I should say, like, like what you get involved in. But then there's, again, the telephone, face-to-face, -face, and uh, email. Uh, and, and when you send your email into the town website, it does come to the town manager and I. So every email that comes in, we're either, it's either sent to us directly or we're copied on it. Mm. And we do read them and we literally get hundreds Else of Also hopes all residents feel comfortable reaching out for help. You can find department listings and telephone numbers on the town's website at town.barnstable.ma.us. The most recent school committee meeting included an evaluation of the 7th grade iPad program, an update on the search for a new school superintendent, and information on a new playground. To find out more, Barnstable This Morning host Sarah Colvin sat down with Interim Superintendent Bill Butler. We share that interview with you now. The committee met uh, last week, of course, uh, you know, light agenda because well, it is summertime. It is, it is summer and uh, we, we, we skip some parts of the agenda in the summer, but uh, uh, they did do some business uh, and uh, uh, they had a very good discussion uh, to start uh, 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 an evaluation of the grade 7 one to one iPad initiative. Uh, what in, in last year's budget the school committee uh, funded uh, a, a one to one iPad initiative for grade 7 at Barnesville Intermediate School about $250,000 to buy iPads for each 7th grader. And uh, the committee had some concern about the efficacy of, of mm. that initiative and whether it would be successful in improving student achievement. Uh, so they conditioned the grant uh, on an evaluation and uh, well, last Wednesday they heard the results of the evaluation. Uh, the evaluation concentrated on uh, the issue of whether uh, the one-to-one -one iPad initiative changed teacher and student practices in the use of technology. Uh, and it found that they did. Uh, both teachers and students uh, used more sophisticated technology applications in seventh grade than sixth grade, mm. than in sixth grade. Uh, more multimedia presentation, software applications, uh, and, and more sophisticated applications all around. Uh, what, the, what the evaluation does not show us is whether uh, the use of a one-to-one -one iPad uh, improves student achievement. And from what we can tell, uh, there's not much research out there right now. Right. So I think, I think the school committee is going to move slowly on that and uh, um, just reserve judgment because I just don't think there's enough uh, evidence uh, that it improves student achievement. But I do think, I, I, I do think from this anecdotal evidence uh, that it changes practices. and. Uh, and I think that's all to the good. Indeed. Now, when you say one to one, that is that does that just mean that every student every, has every, one? Every every student has one. Uh, we we have uh, uh, all kinds of technology in the school system. In in, in sixth grade, uh, we have uh, I, iPad carts, uh, mm -hmm. thirty iPads on a cart, and uh, students share those. Uh, but in seventh grade, they have one. They they can't take them home. They have to leave them in school. But they have one, uh, an iPad assigned to each student, 
and each student uh, is responsible for it and uh, uses it exclusively. And uh, we did find that, that that does change practices. Now, do you know what kind of things they, they use the iPad for? Is it just kind of creating those multimedia programs, like maybe replacing textbooks or, or being able to use it for internet research, uh, that they, sort of they, thing? They, 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 <coughs> use, they use them for calculators, cameras, collaborative workspaces, email, internet browsers, mapping software, multimedia creation, Online storage applications, the cloud. Yeah, app I just I think about the old pull-down map in the classrooms yeah. uh, that, yeah. that, that I went to school in, and the maps have completely changed. They I mean, you can go around the world just from that little tiny students screen. Students create podcasts, uh, so it's, you know that. I mean, they're much more technically proficient than I am. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and it just makes me think that you know the future of the research paper, that double space ten page oh, yeah, thing, is now going to include audio and video oh, and absolutely. pictures and Abs absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, absolutely, uh, the, the way the technology has changed. So that's that's interesting. But I, I can see how you know it's so new that there it's hard to kind of get those measurables and that's see. That's right, and it's hard. To, I, I think it's hard to figure out is there something special about the iPad or would uh, other for, uh, some of the research seems to show that iPads uh, are successful at the uh, middle school level, right. but at the, at the high school level, uh, laptops are more successful. Interesting. Uh, and uh, and on some school districts are looking at Chromebooks now, right. which are uh, much less expensive. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. Uh, Superintendent Search Committee, of course, uh, set a timeline uh, for the search. They did. They, uh, they, they, uh, uh, Looked at a calendar uh, that uh, winds up with an announcement by January 1st, 2016. Uh, so that's uh, that's progress. They also voted to uh, uh, set a salary range of 175,000 to $200,000 a year. Uh, that's up a little from the salary range they set uh, five years ago when uh, Mary Chikowsky came in. It was that range was 165 to 190. Uh, and I think it simply reflects the, the, the competition for superintendents throughout the state. Indeed, indeed. Uh, one part of the, the discussion uh, from last week that I thought was interesting, though, is just the, the kind of climate in terms of looking at other schools that are looking for administrators. It's, it's a little less competitive right now uh, than it was, uh, you know, obviously citing the fact that we lost our superintendent sure. because the field was so competitive. La la last year there were an unusual number of, of uh, superintendent searches by uh, school districts that are in the top tier mm. uh, academically uh, and uh, those are attractive positions and they they tend to be in wealthier communities that have larger budgets that can afford to pay higher salaries. Indeed. Uh, there don't seem to be as many of those searches this year uh, which I think is good for Barnstable. Uh, but I think I think Barnstable is a competitive position under any circumstances. Absolutely. Uh, uh, We've, we've had, uh, uh, particularly, I mean, I've been here 11 years, and uh, uh, Tom McDonald was an, was an interim. He was a principal in, in Barnstable, but uh, uh, Patty Grenier and Mary Chikowsky were uh, top-notch, uh, excellent superintendents, and I think we'll find uh, an excellent superintendent Absolutely. to replace Mary. Well, we look forward to uh, watching that progress unfold. Uh, and then uh, uh, other items on the, um, the agenda were kind of some improvements. We, 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 had, we had two facilities uh, project approvals. Uh, that's part of uh, the town's capital improvement plan, uh, a flooring replacement project, and a, uh, a burner upgrade. Uh, and then we had uh, uh, approval uh, for the uh, a playground at the Early Learning Center, and uh, uh, that's exciting. Uh, we got a uh, $35,000 grant from the Barnstable Disability Commission uh, toward construction, uh, and uh, we estimate the total construction cost will be about $160,000, and uh, through uh, uh, funding that we had left over from last year that we didn't spend, uh, we're going to be able to fund that and uh, move forward. With Butler says the playground will be complete before school begins. The planning board meets at 7 tonight in the town hall hearing room, and the Sandy Neck board will meet at 7.30 tonight in the Selectman's conference room. We'll be sure to tune in to our hour-long news program, Barnstable, this morning weekdays at 7 a.m. On tomorrow's show, we will chat with Police Chief Paul McDonald. We'll learn more about the calmer choice during our community profile segment. Plus, we'll have all the news and information you need. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.